Um, my name is Tommy. I'm from Finnair. Uh, right now, working a lot with the digital transformation around that topic. So uh, the the Finnair case study will be a little bit about personalization, of course, as I'm standing with uh, with, with Frostmo here. But I would like to also uh, talk a little bit about that digital transformation. So uh, Finnair is well known airline what comes to our e-commerce knowledge. Uh, 20 years ago we started Finnair.com. I think we were one of the first airlines with our own uh, site. A few, few years later uh, we implemented our booking engine. A couple of years more we started doing more booking and giving checking services and, and all the stuff that you know all the airlines are doing nowadays. Uh, we have, of course, gone further also, not just doing personalization, already three years in row, but also uh, our site uh, is responsive. We have the best in class mobile application, and we are definitely going to get much better and stronger with our Airbus uh, Wi Fi connections and so on, as you must have heard. Uh, don't go so fast. I might like to speak. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, one, one slide back. So, uh, Finnair is capable of doing a lot of uh, development because we work with multiple, very well picked and picked uh, vendors who are making great innovations. And the other reason how how come we can develop things fast is that our internal team, our, our Finnair commercial teams, is also structured very well. We work very well transparently, hand to hand together. All the e-commerce related projects involve everyone from the revenue management to IT, uh, to marketing, of course, loyalty, customer experience teams, and so on. And, and we, work well, we work well in this matrix uh, type of a way. Yeah. And Frosmo, of course, unlike Finnair, nobody knows us. We've been in business like 2008. Um, we started with gaming and retail industry. Uh, we rely on JavaScript technology. It's been possible only in this scope after 2011, after Internet Explorer 9. And it's amazing what we can do today. It's in a couple of years we have actually operating systems functioning in a browser environment. We go to details later. But we are the company, or at least among one of those companies who have been driving the past seven years the e-retail business to the point of conversion optimization and personalization they have today. Your keynote speakers today and yesterday have been talking about lessons learned on e-commerce, lessons learned on e-retail, and other topics. We'll go further in there and see how much more further actually airline industry can go way beyond e-retail. Um, for beginning, in here, the point is simply to make you remind that one of the problems of airline industry and the technology is that putting the support functions to that proper place, um, it's always IT project. I heard that so many times. Developing online business is not an IT process. CRM systems, CMS systems, all that IT stuff underneath, that's the support function. That's how it should be. I know it's not how it is, but that's how it should be. You don't need those integrations. They are optional, and I'll come to that right to explain later on. You need the store operatives and the decision makers to actually have the access to all knowledge and do it real time, to be able to know what's valid today and to whom. Well, that's, that's a familiar picture to everyone. A couple months ago, I attended here in London, uh, one of our industry uh, events like this and there was a hotel, one global hotel chain CTO giving a speech about uh, digital transformation. He told us that they have, a, they have an aim in five years to be able to offer their products, services uh, in every step of the way of the, of, of the, uh, of the customer journey. And the income was actually that it has to be personalized offering. Uh, I started thinking five years for digital transformation project to be able to personalize 
the company's products and services. I mean, I'm an automation engineer. My background is elsewhere. It sounds crazy. But I'm living that life right now myself, doing a digital transformation project, a multi-year task. So what about meanwhile? How do we deliver? What, what can we actually uh, give our management to our customers meanwhile? Uh, we can't wait anything five years. By that time, we have to start everything all over again. So personalization, how I see it, is, is a one quick win for everyone. You only need two things. Know your customer and have a valid and, and good product offering. Only two things. And that's how we did. Yeah, <clears throat> and this is pretty much how it used to be done. You had your deep backend system from your GDF provider. You may have multiple CRM systems. All of them have to be working together to actually be providing that personalized data and the end user experience. Very fast, you can see that the legacy is actually limitation. The technology is limitation. Then user experience is defined by and dependent on, on the actual underlying structure. From our point of view, and what JavaScript enables us to do, is exactly the opposition. How it should be and how it is with certain clients. For example, to personalize data, we don't need them to log in. We can track everything they do on a browser, whether it's a mobile or desktop. It's actually a legal question how much data we can use. It's all already combined in the end user's browser. Today we have operating systems, and that's why with software and, and complex environments running in a browser. We can do all that. We can do all that today. We can do that in months instead of years. That's how we go, and, and we go deeper how it's done. But JavaScript, all you have to do is, is it's one solution to this, and then it's, it's simple placing a tag on your site. It takes less than 30 minutes. That's the integration you need. In the end, user browser, there are data storages on a browser. They run, they can shuffle your whole system, whatever your GDS provider says, whatever your CMS provider says. We can actually use modern day technology within the browser to reschedule, restructure the whole customer experience. We have even done entire user interfaces, again, in the browser, regardless of the original site. You want to have a mobile interface, mobile customer experience, you don't have to do it anymore. You don't have to do it in your old site. We can do it on top of it. So even I don't believe what he's talking. But we've done part of those, so I'm, I'm starting to believe. And, and this guy is not paying me anything for this. Uh, how we started was that we saw a risk-free possibility for us to test without pretty much any integration work from our side. Our IT did not have to do anything at all. And we made it work first POC and continued with the pilot. And, and now we are running uh, in finger.com, is it some 250 campaigns all the time. Also our tour operator in fin uh, Finland, Sun Tours, is running some 750 campaigns using Frosmo personalized tool. So all the content that we show is personalized. That's pretty amazing. And, and it looks to me, it looks that, that this, is, this is some kind of a very risky, uh, what do you call it, uh, screen scraping tool mechanism, which immediately sounds bad into my ear at least, or at least our IT people are uh, in ears. And, uh, after we went through all the risk analyses and, and of course also the data privacy stuff and all of these evaluations, uh, we are still stuck with Frosnum. Though, uh, uh, saying about a little bit about the transformation project that you, you guys are also, also running, the big idea of course is to have your own big database, big data uh, base for your customers, for your knowledge. Uh, and, and right now we are running uh, the data from Frosmos uh, 
kind of like, yeah, we are, we're not linking all the data to our own side. So there are still some things that we need to work on. Can we do it with Crossmo or will we build it ourselves? That is still a question. But what comes to a quick win, uh, this tool definitely helped us to make a huge step when it comes to a personalization. And now we have learned a lot already in three years and we know what we are aiming in, in our digital transformation project and what is possible, what is not. Very much what was stated earlier, it is a 30 minute integration. It's, it's less than <coughs> that. Uh, you have to, of course, collect a little bit, a little while, the customer data to understand <coughs> who is that guy on your side. Now it's even better when we started, uh, we needed to actually create a history, to create segments, to create rules, blah, blah, blah. But now it's very dynamic. Everything that you do at the site or our customer does at the site instantly, we can. Uh, we can create a content uh, if we just have rules based on those movements and actions. So, as <clears throat> Tromi tries to kindly say, we are a tool for transformation period, you know, in the meanwhile. So, of course, they are planning their own system. Um, three years behind almost, and, and it's doing great, and the results are even better. I kind of challenge that comment that we are only a transition phase tool. We kind of want to think about how we develop further and how the technology, not just us, but our competitors as well. Having a own tool out of your core business, I mean, your core business is selling and running airlines, not actually doing software development in, in, in house. Um, we could see that this kind of platform agnostic system that doesn't care what the underlying structure is, your IT department and your IT leaders are going to hate us. That's true. We are downsizing your IT cost 90% easily if you consider how many teams you need, how many outsourced teams you need, how possibly <laughs> multiple outsourced companies. But the risk, having somebody else do, as you said, the beautiful word of screen scraping, that's kind of first word on my <coughs> It's not necessarily that. We can actually do the integrations. We've already been hearing about XMLPs, providing real-time data about prices, about weather information, seed mapping, whatever you do, you can stop thinking about simply providing what you have currently at best. You already have the information, you have huge amounts of data, but before you apply that data, why not use something more agile? We have been talking, these are just casual examples from e-retail examples, what we've done on airline industry on Finnair, what we also do on retail business. But and many keynote speakers have been talking about lessons in retail business. It's kind of a nice start for you guys, but Apple doesn't care who you are. When you buy an iPhone, they offer you the product. They offer you the extra charger for an office or an extra USB cable. They don't care who you are. Amazon doesn't care. They, they have huge intelligence algorithms to see the dependencies between products. If you buy this and that, it's most likely you buy the third one as the 100,000 others did. That's what they do. Retail company doesn't care if you, Tommy, you order that milk. But imagine your, we have done already integrations, <coughs> individual level personalization to the masses. In Finland, it's possible to have a public record. We have a public record in magistrate that keeps record for everybody's name and addresses. And it's open. Our customer wanted to know, what if somebody changes their address, they move around. We search that database, we recognize if somebody has actually moved. When they log into the customer system, there is a, hey Tom, you have moved, would you check if this is your current address in permanent basis? And that's how it goes, and we can just do it automatically. You can go so much further than any retail company, so don't set your goals only to the level of retail companies, go beyond. Unlike retail companies, Flight industry, travel industry, actually has a personalization product. You can actually take it so much further. So, please, find out more about taking technology limitations away, forget it's an IT project, and go forward. As I said, <coughs> we'll be fast. That's it. Time for questions.
how have they improved? Katie, I said you very easy to you, Rose. Uh, conversions, campaign conversions. We started with easy cases, just telling some destination based on their segment that it belong. But it doesn't really work. I mean, that mass segmentation is a different story than personalization. Mass personalization is still pretty far from the great conversion features. When you know exactly that this family is going to plan to their trip to Lapland or somewhere else, and you're able to target that message instantaneously when they are out to the site, that is when the personalization <coughs> actually starts to work. Everything else is, uh, well, yeah, you can improve your ancillary sales, but it's not about personalization. It's about when do you offer something to whom, what kind of a segment you offer something. Uh, I find that personalization is way beyond those normal rules that, that anyone can make. So when when you do that, uh, you'll you'll be amazed at the conversion figures, which I won't even tell you. And I'm not able. Any other questions? Well, it is it, it is a fact that just taking a, a nice tool like like Frostmark. It, it doesn't help you forward unless you have a business people who understand the customer and actually create those tools and analyze those and so on. So you have to put focus what you do. Uh, there is no easy way out. It does help if the tool provider also provides consultation about how to use it. Just mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, thank you very much.